Hey guys, it's your boy the Rob Steph Edmonton's finest and welcome to the first episode of Time to Tell a Story. Now before we start, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. Guys, we're almost at 100 subscribers. Hit that bell beside it so you can be the first one to be updated for my future videos. Let's get into it. So today's story is about my journey as an immigrant and how I became a citizen in Canada. As you guys know, your boy the Rob Step is Filipino, technically Canadian now. But if you did not know that, well, roll the clip. As you guys know, your boy is Filipino. I was born and raised there. There you go. So for 13 years of my life, I lived in the Philippines. It was a fun 13 years. It had its ups and downs, but other than that, I enjoyed it. I left most of my friends and grandma, but we still keep in touch every now and then. I got to experience elementary school and some junior high school in the Philippines. It was pretty fun. So first of all guys, my mom left the Philippines to work in Canada in 2009. She went to Canada when I was 8 years old and little did she know and little did I know that we were gonna be separated for 5 years. <laughs> Five straight years. So in that five years, we were completely separated and the only way that we'd talk is through Skype. She wasn't able to come home simply because she didn't have any savings for herself. She would send most of her money to the Philippines, mostly for my schooling and for my grandma's meds. I remember I didn't go to any public schools in the Philippines. That's why my tuition is so freaking expensive every year. Pretty lucky kid. Fast forward to April 15th, 2014. Five years later, I would never forget this day because this is the day that I would see my mom and dad for the first time in five years. I remembered it was me, my uncle, and my grand auntie who dropped me off at the airport. But they got stopped by security saying that they can't go in with me because I'm already checking in. So my uncle said to me, You're on your own. And that got me a little nervous. So yeah, I traveled alone. I was a 13-year-old traveler and uh, my mom and dad didn't pick me up in the Philippines or anything because they know it would cost more. She even made me a banner celebrating my arrival. Here's the photo. But let's go back a little bit in the story. So around 15 to 20 more minutes till the plane lands and one of the flight attendants transferred me to this vacant business class seat. And I remembered it was so spacious that one day, I'm only gonna fly business class and not economy. Well, she put me there so I can get off the plane first. Well, now, plane lands. Knowing that I am now in a foreign country, was I gonna be culture shocked? A little bit. I get off the plane first, just to be stopped by this lady who looks like the witch from Wizard of Oz. She made me wait there at the side till all of the passengers have gotten off the plane. Like, what is this monstrosity? I just want to see my mom now. Anyways, immigration time. Before I go out to the main lobby of the airport, I have to go through immigration. I took out all of my documents and now it's time for me to talk to the immigration officer. <coughs> he asked me this and that and I answered all of his questions. He quickly told me, Your English is pretty good. Have you been speaking English your whole life? Well, I'm a private school kid so... Kinda? <laughs> Anyways, he marked my passport and I was good to go. But he quickly asked one more question. How long didn't you see your parents? But my only answer was, I haven't seen my mom for five years. And he just said, Wow, fantastic baby. Then he let me be on my way. It's that simple. Now I'm at the lobby. I can clearly see my mom from afar and I can tell that it's her. Because she's the only woman. That is 411 in that airport. And she's holding a banner twice her size. Anyways, she ran to me, hugged me, and kissed me for the first time in five years. I remembered we had lots of fun in DC before we drove back to Alberta. Now, I'm finally settled in Alberta. And two weeks later, my mom decided to enroll me into my junior high school. My first impression of the school here was I thought I was gonna get picked on because I'm the new guy. But no! They love me for some reason. It's probably because I watch a lot of American movies in the Philippines. That's why I thought I was gonna get picked on when I go to school here. There was this one white kid though who called me the N-word 
and I'm not even black. See that? I'm Kayumangi <laughs> Brown. Fast forward two months later, and your boy is finally a permanent resident in Canada. See? Just two months. So yeah, I spent my junior high school studying and doing track. Met some of my good friends there, and now into high school life. Here's the thing, grade 10 is the most easiest grade out there. Grade 11, getting a little bit harder. And grade 12, you just gotta hang on for your life until you graduate. I spent four years as a permanent resident starting in grade 8 until grade 11. And finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, and the moment I've been waiting for, my early grad gift on my final year in high school is that I became a citizen. On March 21st, 2019, I became a citizen. But all of that wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for, you've guessed it, my mom. As I grew older, each day and every second of my life, I realized that I owe everything to my mom. I realized that it must be hard for her that she didn't know anyone, literally didn't know anyone, when she first came here. It must be hard for her that she couldn't see me, nor my grandma, even if she wanted to. I remembered when she called my grandma and I, and she just cried the whole time because she just said she just wanted to come home. When she said that, it crushed me because it feels like she was locked in a cell. All of the sacrifices that my mom made for me, I will forever remember and treasure for the rest of my life. So I guess this is not just my immigrant story, this is also hers. Mom, if you're watching this at work, anywhere, at home, or if you're taking a shit, just remember, thank you so much for everything, and I love you so much. And when I become successful, yes, you heard me, I said when, not if, trust me, I will give you the whole world someday. And that's it for this episode of Time to Tell a Story. If you like that, make sure you share this video to your friends. Hit that subscribe button down below right now so you won't forget later. Also, hit that like button for no reason. This is your boy, the Rob Staff Edmonton's Finest, and I'll see you guys on the next one.